Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 39 of the Cloud Computing Training Show with Brad Nelson and internationally recognised and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, David and I were talking about the Alibaba Group has launched the Alibaba Talent Program in Singapore with the support of Nanyang Technological University and the Singapore Economic Development Board under the Industrial Postgraduate Program. And make sure you stay until the end to get David's top three training tips on cloud. Hi, Dave. It's great to see you on the training show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here. An inter interesting topic. We're kind of extending this, the show we had last week to this week. Yeah, Alibaba making a, a big deal, and I think it's uh, about this training in universities and the whole education around cloud at the moment is, is fantastic, and we really, truly should embrace it because there's a real need for it. And I think uh, the big players like AWS, Google, Azure, and Alibaba now are, are really stepping up to the mark. So, look, great opening question for you, Dave, is do you think China will reach out more to other markets? And what markets would you see as being next on their list? Yeah, I think, number one, uh, yes, they will. I think they have to reach out of China to be successful. And and so I think it's going to be, the you know, Asia-Pac, it's going to be, um, you know, Singapore, which they're looking to get into now. Um, you know, certainly, um, you know, Australia, uh, New Zealand, and those sorts of markets, which are kind of smaller in nature, but they're still kind of big deals for, you know, Alibaba to have a representative in. It's going to be much harder for them to break into the U.S. and European market but I see them having sites on those as well. And I think that, you know, people are looking for a low cost commodity provider then Alibaba is going to be able to fill the bill in some instances, you know, you get around the political the political thing around being a Chinese owned company. But going forward, I think that, uh, you know, this is in essence a step in the right direction because what they're doing is they're investing in other countries, in this case, an educational system to understand their technology, very much like we saw with AWS and Microsoft and Google are basically doing similar things and very similar programs. And I suspect that maybe that's why they're doing it. But from a uh, market perspective, they're investing in the markets that they think they're going to be able to penetrate quickest. You know, Singapore, Australia is probably going to be next, New Zealand, um, and the list goes, you know, list goes down the line in terms of the Asia Pac countries that are basically going to fall in line. With Alibaba, so this is something that's going to pay dividends. They're probably going to get ten dollars back for every dollar they invest. So you know, smart for Alibaba, and uh, you know they're moving like crazy right now. Yeah, they truly are. In fact, I'd like to give you another question because there's been a lot going on in the news in the last few days, actually, around the investment that the Chinese government is putting into Africa. Uh, I mean, not the whole of Africa, but a lot, a lot of states within Africa. Uh, I think it's t totaling around 60 billion US dollars or about 80 uh, billion Australian dollars in the next three years to help building infrastructure and things like that. How do you see Alibaba positioning themselves in this opportunity? I think they're going to follow the money into those markets. I, I don't think there's a huge cloud market right now in Africa other than South Africa. You know, but I see that growing over time, being the fact there's emerging you know, worlds there uh, that exist in the market as well as in the Middle East. And I think the Chinese government is looking out for the Chinese government. They're going to make the investments. They're going to basically produce the biggest return and the ability to basically provide the, their um, you know, companies, Alibaba being one of thousands, with an inroad into these particular kinds of countries. And so I think that we're going to see the government investment be followed by uh, micro investment from the, uh, from the companies. And we're going to see additional sales and marketing activities from the companies within, the, within those worlds. And whether, uh, and whether, you know, no matter what you think about the politics and this stuff, that's just a factor. That's what's going to happen in the economy. So um, companies are going to have to figure countries are going to have to figure out how to deal with that. And going forward, they have to have some policies in place to make it, um, you know, something that, that can be controlled and governed and things like that. Yeah, it, re it really is. There's a real opportunity for Alibaba just to jump in there and take Africa uh, from a cloud point of view, isn't there? Because, I mean, you know, if you're building infrastructure with regards to roads and, and sewers and all that sort of stuff, you know, cloud kind of goes hand in hand with, with cabling and, and everything that's got to be done. So Alibaba seems like they've got their foot in the door really quite nicely. Yeah, I, I think the, uh, the advent of something like, um, you know, 5G and WiMAX and all the things that... Uh, are also going to unleash Australia, in my opinion, too. I mean, there's a lot of poor parts of Australia, they don't have the internet. I remember, you know, talking to an Australian company, you know, five, five years ago, and 
you know, telling them that the, the cloud community is the greatest thing in the world and access over the internet and things like that. Someone raised their hand and said, we don't got the bloody internet, so what good is it going to do us? And I think the reality is that's a problem that's going to get solved. And I think a lot of the other countries are going to get it solved as well. And so if that occurs, the internet's kind of followed in by the internet services, cloud computing being the, you know, first and foremost of running particular businesses. It'll just open up those markets as well because I think everything kind of happens around the utilization of connectivity it has here in the States. I mean, uh, huge areas that were economically impoverished have been um, brought out of nowhere, brought out of the dust just because of internet connect connectivity coming in. I think that at a micro level, we're going to see so at a macro level within the country. So what are they going to use the internet for? Accessing data, running their businesses, ability to find out information, buying and selling goods uh, over the internet. Things like that. It's just going to be, uh, you know, step in the right direction. And the thing is, if Alibaba is willing to provide these services at the cost, then in an emerging nation, that's going to be probably more of a uh, of a driving factor than who they're buying it from. Yeah, absolutely huge. And from a price point of view as well, they've got to get it right, haven't they? Because I mean, it's certain parts of uh, well, just the 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 the, um, the commerce side of Africa, people actually, you know buying things it's going to have to be relative to their market so i think the thing is though with alibaba because they come in at such a low price point when it comes to cloud and they offer so much facility their model actually would probably work well in that emerging market wouldn't it yeah it would yeah it would and their, their prices are uh, are certainly competitive um but i don't think they're discounting to the levels i think people are waiting for them to discount yeah true and and finally just one second i, I before we get to our before we get to our three points there are you okay I'm good. Okay, good. Right. When we get back to our, our three points, I just wanted to say that your Australian accent with We Ain't Got the Bloody Internet, or that was fantastic. I love that. Did you really? Yeah, you, were, you thought you were, you were beamed away to uh, the outback, and I was standing there in uh, my dirty shirt and, hat and snake hat. Yeah, and yeah, not for a minute. <laughs> I thought you had a, a cold tinny in hand and I was in the bush. If I wandered in the bush in Australia, I probably wouldn't come back, so... You probably shouldn't. No, exactly. Well, it moves us on nicely to the top three tips of the day, a day for training. So if you'd like to share those, that'd be great. Thank you. Sure. I mean, number one, watch focusing on too much on a single provider. I think, um, you know, one of the things that we're understanding is certain markets are going to be served by single providers in a very dominant way. And um, so while that's good in some aspects, because we're buying from a single source that we know, the reality is it's a multi-cloud world. You need to be able to buy storage from two different providers. You need to provide databases from two different providers, two or more different providers. You need to be able to move your applications in between these various systems. If we're going to have a competitive environment where we're able to ensure ourselves at reducing the risk because we have more than one player that's in there. And so keep that in mind. And I think what scares me about uh, this, not necessarily picking on Alibaba, but we are going to see markets that are served by one cloud provider and they're not going to have choices that they need to make. And, you know, therefore, we may even see uh, higher prices in some of these emerging markets just because of the lack of choice. And I think that's a bit scary. Um, elevate training, you know, evaluate the training needs monthly as to what you need. You need to basically return to the technology that we're leveraging and not a yearly basis, not a bi yearly basis, but a monthly basis and understanding what's changed and what needs to be adjusted for. I mean, we were having a conversation about training prior to recording this show, and the reality is the answer I'm going to give you today is going to be very different than the answer I'm going to give you next month. And so we're continuously improving training, continuously evaluating what the training needs are. And finally, working you know, with other agencies you know, and institutions I think is a good idea. I think that Alibaba would probably be making a mistake if they set up the Alibaba Institute in Singapore. And the Alibaba Institute in uh, Australia, not that that's a bad thing, but I think working with existing people who are already doing, um, you know, uh, basically running classes and staffing classes and scheduling classes and having the real estate to, to produce and have the classes, infrastructure for automation, things like that. It's a good idea to ride on top of those existing institutions and not trying to reinvent the wheel there. And I think we're doing that in the States as well with the thing that we saw you do last week with some moving into community colleges. And I think this is going to be a huge success. Yeah, truly. Thanks, Dave. Great three top tips there. I really appreciate that.
Anytime. Excellent. And we hope everyone else appreciates Dave's top three tips. Uh, if you go back now, we've got weeks and weeks of these tips and they really, really are so insightful. So if this is the first time you're visiting the uh, the training show with us, then please go back and, uh, and, and view some of the other shows. Also, all of these shows are on iTunes and Stitcher for podcasts. So check those out as well. Dave, thanks for being part of the, uh, the training show again this week. It's been awesome. It's always a pleasure, man. Good to be here. Excellent. Thank you very much. And thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed watching this show. And we really appreciate all your support on Twitter uh, with you know sharing these videos out there with your friends and your colleagues. Uh, and feel free to subscribe as well if you want to keep up to date with all the latest releases that come out. And remember to click the notification bell so you're updated with all the future ones that we're doing because we're doing lots more shows, lots of cool things coming up with David as well, which uh, I'm really, really excited about. Uh, David's on Twitter, so you can reach out to David on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Again, reach out if you've got any questions. Uh, we will happily connect or introduce you to people if you if you need to connect. Uh, and David's on LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn. And uh, yeah, I think I think that's covered everything with regards to social media. Oh no, I forgot we're on Instagram as well. Check us out on Instagram where we've got some cool graphics for all our blogs and the shows and funny things that are going on, on Instagram. You know what Instagram's like. Anyway, thanks for watching and until next week. <laughs>